Hey everyone, it's Sam with the Time for Science. I'm here for this week's virtual science lesson, and today we're going to be talking all about habitats. Now, does anyone know what a habitat is? It may be a word that you're not familiar with, but it's really straightforward. A habitat is just a place where an animal makes their home. In a habitat, an animal finds everything they need to survive. What is it that animals need to survive? That's right, animals need food to survive. You gotta eat. Animals need a shelter, a place to hide from predators or maybe to hide from their prey, a place to keep warm and dry or to stay wet depending on the animal. They need access to air, the ability to breathe, they need access to water, and they need sunlight, maybe to stay warm if they're a reptile or an amphibian that isn't warm-blooded, or maybe just to help plants and other things in their habitat grow. So all living things need food, water, shelter, sunlight, and air to survive. Now, do you think all animals make their home in the same habitat? You're absolutely right, they don't. Some animals can live in very, very cold conditions really far north on our planet or really far south. Some animals can live in the middle of a desert with no plants around. Some animals make their home underwater and some animals even live miles underwater in the deep, deep ocean. So different types of animals live in different types of habitats. We're gonna go around today and take a look at some of the habitats here at A Time for Science. And we're also going to talk about how you can design your own habitat. The first animal we're gonna talk about makes its home in clear, quiet waters that has a bottom with gravel or mud. They mostly like to live in ponds, but sometimes you can find them in slow moving rivers or creeks. They find their shelter underwater and males make a nest site for their young by using their tails to fan a shallow depression in the bottom of the pond. A lot of times they might like to hide under docks or weed beds like you see here or maybe under bridges to take shelter. These animals like to eat aquatic insects like dra dragonflies or damselflies when they live underwater maybe smaller fish, pouch snails, mollusks, and even other fish eggs. Sometimes they may occasionally munch on plants. These fish like to live pretty close to the edge of the water in relatively shallow water. If you've been fishing out here at a time for science, you have definitely caught this creature in its natural habitat. The sunfish, also known as brim or bluegill, is the animal that makes its home in this habitat. Here's an example of what a brim looks like. Remember, they're also known as sunfish. Now you might be thinking, Sam, that could describe lots of different animals, and you're absolutely right. The thing is, animals often share a habitat with other animals that have the same needs. Yellow-bellied sliders are a common turtle we have in our property out here. When they're young, they like to eat some of the same food as those brim do. They eat aquatic insects, tadpoles, and even smaller fish. Yellow-bellied sliders are semi-aquatic turtles. They mostly live in the water, but you can find them on land when they're moving from one body of water to another, or maybe when they're digging holes in the sand in order to lay their eggs. They especially need sunlight for warmth. That's why you can often find them sunning or basking on a log or some other surface. In the winter, they brumate, which is the word for when reptiles hibernate. They slow their breathing, they calm their digestion, and they pretty much just sit and wait for spring to come when they can get some warmth once again. Turtle eggs are often eaten by raccoons or possums. 
Here's an example of a turtle's nest that has been destroyed by some other creature. Some hungry animal dug up these eggs, ate the inside, just like you or I might do for breakfast, dug it right out of that nest. Now the next animal we're going to discuss is our first mammal, meaning they're warm-blooded, and they have live young. Now these mammals are sometimes known as nature's architects because of their ability to construct their own habitats. Beavers will often build dams in order to back up waterways so that they can create a nice place for them to swim and float their food around so they don't have to carry it. They like to eat the inner bark or the cambium layer of plants. They'll sometimes eat twigs or aquatic plants such as duckweed like you see right here. This is a perfect example of a beaver habitat. You can see here we're surrounded by water. In this water are these tiny aquatic plants called duckweed. Beavers like to eat duckweed. They also eat the inside layer of trees called cambium. You can see where they've been munching there. And you can see their great big three-story lodge off in the distance. The lodge has an entrance underwater which keeps them safe from predators who might want to make their way in there. Another reptile we're going to talk about today is the black racer. Racer is a kind of snake that's common here in North Carolina. They are technically considered constrictors, but they don't squeeze their prey in the same way that most constrictors do. They're non-venomous, which means they don't have venom when they bite, although they can bite, and should always be left alone if you ever see them. They kind of swallow their prey alive. They like to eat rodents, lizards, frogs, insects, and even snakes that are smaller than them. They find their shelter in wooded areas that have some open space. Again, these reptiles like to bask in the sun in order to warm up. Now I came down here hoping I might find one hiding under a log or under a bridge and while I didn't find any racers out today in their habitat, I did find some evidence that one has been here. Now this may not specifically be a black racer skin, but it is some kind of snake skin. Black racers have smooth scales and these are keeled scales so it's actually not a black racer skin but this is a wonderful snake habitat this little stretch through here is where we often see snakes out sunning in the trail they've got good places to hide over on either side with trees they have some down trees they could crawl under in order to find shelter but if they come out into the middle of the trail, they can catch those lovely warm sun rays. Now, one of my favorite animals that's native here in Eastern North Carolina is the fox squirrel. Now, I know you've seen squirrels all around, those little gray squirrels, but fox squirrels are almost twice as big. Traditionally, they made their habitat in longleaf pine forest. But over time, humans have cut down a lot of those longleaf pine trees, and so now you can often find them growing in mature pine and oak forests. They like to eat pine seeds, acorns, flowers, fungi, mushrooms, insects, and sometimes bird eggs. You can often see evidence of squirrels eating pine cones when you find pine cones that are missing a lot of the cone itself because they've picked out all of the seeds and eaten them as snacks. Here are a couple of really tall pine trees that could be a home to some fox squirrels, really probably just one. They do nest in cavities in the winter or holes in the trees, but in the summer months, they make leaf nests at the top of the trees so that they can stay cool. The last animal we're going to talk about today came to me yesterday. Literally, it came to me when it ran out in front of me when I was driving down my driveway. It was a gray fox. 
it was really special to see it because it was the middle of the day and gray foxes are mostly nocturnal, meaning they sleep during the day and come out of night. But this one must have been extra hungry or maybe it was just up for a midnight snack. Gray foxes like to eat mice, rats, rabbits, birds, big insects, and also fruit like native persimmons or wild grapes. Sometimes you might find them in a farmer's field munching on peanuts and corn. They have the ability to climb trees. Gray foxes often make their homes in forests or near fields. They make what we call a den inside hollow trees or hollowed out stumps. I wonder if there's a fox living in any of these trees. That's just been an example of five different animals and animal habitats that we have out here at A Time for Science. There are hundreds more that I don't have time to cover, but now I have an assignment for you. I would like for you to create your very own animal habitat. Let's say you've been hired as a zookeeper at a local zoo for native animals. Maybe you take in animals that have been injured and can no longer survive in the wild, and we need you to create a habitat to provide everything that animal needs to survive. So you could choose one of the animals that I've talked about today during our lesson, or you can come up with your own animal that you'd like to develop a habitat for. If there's not an animal that you already know about its food and shelter, its needs, its habitat, then you can go to ncwildlife.org and use their North Carolina wildlife profiles in order to find out more about different native animals we have here. If you go to ncwildlife.org, click on learning and then species, there are dozens of species you can look at and learn about there. Once you've learned about your animal, you've decided what food they eat, where they make their shelter, maybe what predators they hide from, what prey they hunt for, where they get their water, their oxygen, and how much sunlight they need, then I want you to draw a picture of that habitat without actually drawing the animal itself. Then you can show that picture to someone else and see if they're able to guess what animal's habitat you are creating. We'd love it if you send us a picture of the animal or the habitat that you are drawing and then maybe we can guess or have other people guess and see if they can decide which habitat you've created. Thanks for joining us for this week's science lesson. We'll see you next week when it'll be Bride the Sky Guy.